And today I'm going to do a similar tutorial to a Spanish language one that's on YouTube. Uh, some YouTube um, users were requesting an English language version of it. Now this might not be the same exact tutorial. Um, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I could understand some of what you're saying and also uh, the menu options and things like that to create something similar. So, um, and I'll link to it as a uh, in the description as well, so you can see the original. Uh, so first thing you want to do is open up uh, an image. It can be a portrait or uh, close up on a face like the original one or just like this one. Um, and you just want to double click the background layer. Click OK, so that's a normal layer. And then create new layer, new blank layer, and drag it below the original one. If you don't convert that to a normal layer, if it's still background layer, you won't be able to drag that one below it. So while we're on this uh, bottom layer, we need to add an effect. So click on the bottom of the layers palette. Just go to pattern overlay and then click this down arrow. And if you only see a couple like this, click this side arrow, and go to patterns, click OK, and click this one right here. All right, and click OK. I'm going to hit the eye icon next to the top layer. Make sure you're on the bottom layer and choose black as the foreground. Just paint bucket tool and just click anywhere in there and we have a pattern here that we can work with. This top layer, change the layer blending mode to multiply. Oops. So now you can see that pattern below. And what we'll do next is um, make a bunch of selections. All right. So, just make a couple small ones here. I can hold shift and maintain a, a perfect square like that if you want. Um, click the second option up here, add to selection. That way I don't have to hold down shift to add to the selection. It'll just keep adding to it. And the basic idea is just to do a couple selections out like this. Some small ones, like so. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Do a couple small ones over here. All right, like so. Then it'll make us a couple small or slightly larger ones. So maybe one that goes across two, and maybe a two by two one like this. So you get the idea. Maybe a two by three. Like so. Okay, and then I'll zoom down here. You just want to make a couple more small ones, whichever. Okay. So once you have a couple things selected like that, what you're going to want to do is actually just press Control J on the PC or Command J on the Mac. It's just a shortcut here. Whatever was selected is now in its own layer. Let's change that layer blending mode to normal for the top. So this top layer, it's normal. And uh, we don't even need that bottom layer with the grid anymore. So I'm just going to hit the eye icon get rid of that. All right. Choose the Move tool here. And you can actually see in a second uh, the effect that we're going to do. Um, now, what we want to do is actually duplicate this layer on top, this one here. So just press Control J, and we're going to drag that over. He has it about you know over about over here. You can hold Shift if you want to add a 90 degree angle, you know even with it, but either way. So those are those two patterns right there. All right. So we have one that's right on top of the original, and one's that's a little bit over to the right hand side. Now this top layer. He does a bevel and emboss effect. I don't think it's necessary, but I'll go ahead and do it and I'll show you what it looks like with it and without it. So 
Top layer, go ahead and click the added effect here, and then bevel and emboss. And for the top one, let's say 100% inner bevel and three pixels for his example. 30% or 30 degrees is fine, and then 75, 75 for opacity. Then click OK. All right. And then the layer right here, we're actually going to do the same thing, bevel emboss, except we'll do one pixel for the size, all right? And this second layer, second to the top layer right here, go ahead and go to image, adjustments, hue saturation, and just bring the lightness down to negative 90. I would actually bring it all the way to negative 100, but he has it on negative 90. But either way, we just want it to be black there. All right. And we also want to go to this top layer here. And we're going to go to Edit, Transform, pers whoops. Edit, Transform, Perspective, not Warp, Perspective. And then just click and drag it up like this. So it kind of is coming out in an angle there. And you can also go to Edit, Transform, uh, Scale. And we'll just bring it out like that. All right, and then just press Enter to apply those changes. All right. Next step is we're actually going to uh, make two copies of the top layer there, so make sure this top layer is selected. Just press Control J twice on the PC or Command J on the Mac. And on the top layer here, just go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. And the amount for the top one, he has it at 50. And then Zoom, and good for the quality. And then the Blur Center, we want it a little bit off to the side, so just click and drag it over to the left like that. Click OK. And then the second top, the second copy, second to the top uh, layer, go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur again. But with this one, only do like 15 instead of 50. Zoom and good as well. Click and drag it over to the right, or actually the left, and click OK. All right, and you can also edit these a little bit more. You can move them around, and again, you can go to Edit, Transform, Perspective, if you need to adjust it a little bit more, and Scale uh, for a different look. All right, same thing with the top one, and the third one from the top as well. Again, if you feel like you need to make a couple more changes, you can, and that's pretty much the effect. I would actually get rid of the Bevel and Boss, um, especially on the bottom layer. I think it looks better with a more simple no border on it like that and having the pixels, the copy coming out like this but then you have the blurs, looks like it's coming out. And you could repeat this on the right hand side for some special kind of look. All right. So that's the effect that um, is done in that tutorial. Mine's just a little bit different, different photo, of course, but also I would suggest not using the Bevel Emboss um, because I think it looks a little bit better just to have a more simple uh, border on all the shapes there in the background shape. Thanks.